but now it's off. You can now I hear you. That's so funny. I just turned the microphone off. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Here we are. <laughs> Thank goodness that was an easy fix. <laughs> exactly. Uh, how are you doing? Good. How have you been? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. It's a rainy, kind of drizzly day today. So um, I'm in my bedroom and I realize it's actually awesome about COVID because now we could be anywhere and there's no expectation for it to be kind of a nice office environment. So that's true. Yeah. So do you want to just jump on in? Because we're going to be talking about joint. Yeah. Uh, and let me just turn over the floor to you and then you can talk about it from your expertise. Sure. Okay. Um, so the topic is joint and muscle pain, because I know there is a specific request for this topic. Um, now, I, I want to differentiate between the different kinds, because there's, it's normal to have joint and muscle pain sometimes after a workout. That is called uh, DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And that is normal, usually happens about a day or two after you've worked out and it dissipates over time. And it's just because you've woken up muscles that you probably haven't used or you're using them in a different way. It's a good thing. But if you are having chronic uh, stiffness and pain in your joints or your muscles, it could be something else. Now, uh, it's not clinically proven that it's due to low estrogen, but the fact that it, it is a fact that we lose bone density and are at risk for osteoporosis and osteoarthritis as we get older. And that's for men and women, predominantly in women because we have the low estrogen issue. And that means our bones, but all of us as we get older, our bones start losing density. So we are more at risk of osteoarthritis and that's when you start getting swollen and painful joints. And that is something, if it's chronic, if it's happening a lot, you do wanna ask your doctor about it and see what they say. But don't think that not exercising is the answer because it's actually more beneficial to stay active. You wanna maintain that range of motion, that flexibility, work through the stiffness gradually and uh, yeah, we just, we need to stay active. So I have a number of recommendations that I can go over after, but I think the most important thing is to figure out what's going on first and have a chat with your doctor. And, and if you're working out and feel pain at any time, like a sharp, sudden, not natural pain, not a usual thing, you should always stop and get that checked out. That's, I always tell my clients to stop <laughs> because you could make it worse and you don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so, and also osteoarthritis is, again, it's the painful swollen uh, joints and osteoporosis. I just want to make sure people understand what these terms are that we're throwing around. Osteoporosis is, again, it's like when the bones start to get thinner and that makes them more fragile. So we're more at risk of injury and more at risk of getting things like osteoarthritis. So I hope that's clear. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of terms that I think um, kind of float around and they're hard to differentiate. So thanks for, for, uh, for doing <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you have any questions, Kathy, about what I just said or? No, and I think that whole model, uh, no pain, no gain, needs to go out the window. You know, and, you know, the million dollar question is, is it discomfort or is it pain? And I think sometimes yes. uncomfortable, uh, we immediately back away from it and say, no, I don't want to do that. But I think for each person's body, um, trying to figure out what is discomfort and what is pain is actually really, uh, can be really insightful. So true. And so important as well. I my biggest pet peeve as a trainer are workouts that don't include a warm up and a cool down mm -hmm. because it is more important than ever to get those muscles warmed up, those joints warmed up and cooled down after, or you could injure yourself again. You run more of a risk of injury. So very, very important. Do not skip the warm ups and the cool downs. A lot of people, I used to do it. I used to just want to get right into the workout, but you have to warm up first. Um, I know there's something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember what it is now. Brain fog. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. I'll jump in. And then when you remember, just let me know. I think um, also the, you know, cause I also teach, I don't, I don't do strength training like you do, but I do, I teach um, kind of like a Qigong yoga inspired movement class. And I think in all my kind of movement um, practices and, and teachings and when I've learned from people is that we need to diversify how we're moving. So oftentimes we're always moving in a very frontal way, like a, we call it sagittal plane. We're always moving forward. And I think uh, a variety of movement is really important for your joint health. So walking sideways, walking backwards, mm -hmm. just trying to actually engage and move your body differently is super important. And for some of us, um, for, the, for those of us kind of in the perimenopause, menopausal phase, we may find that when we wake up in the mornings, our joints are a little bit, uh, some women or people um, explain that they have like stiffness in the joints. And again, movement is really important, diversifying, moving, just getting up and, and doing that because it'll bring, bring blood flow and fluids to those joints, which is really important. Absolutely. So true. So besides warming up and cooling down uh, and working out, obviously, can be beneficial. Uh, hydrating. You want to make sure uh, because low estrogen can actually dehydrate as well. Mm -hmm. So that's something I didn't know before. I, you know, started my studies. So make sure you stay hydrated more than ever. Uh, protein, more important than ever too, because you want to make sure you're able to keep that lean muscle mass, protect the bones because muscle health and bones, you know, they work together. So we got to do that. Um, weight, this is always a sensitive subject, but again, the only reason we advocate for weight loss in situations like this is because if you're carrying too much weight, you're putting more stress on your joints. And that is, that is a problem. So mm -hmm. that's when it can be very beneficial to start trying to, to lose weight, whether it's through resistance training, any kind of movement. You don't have to do high impact too. If you do have osteoarthritis, you decide um, it's too painful. You can do <clears throat> the lower impact, uh, lower intensity just as long as you're moving like like kathy said the yoga that is an excellent way to keep you know working the flexibility and range of motions uh, yeah. range of motion in your joints yeah and walking and hiking and doing various things you're still moving um i wanted to just quickly touch back to hydration because of course mm -hmm. water consumption is important um but also uh, we consume a lot of things that are dehydrating our body. And so in addition to water, which is actually a really great flush, like it flushes our bodies out, but to hydrate ourselves from a really systemic place, bone broths or broths or stews or soups are really great nourishing for uh, the body's uh, and tissues. And so I think that's really important as well as just noticing if there's anything causing your body to be inflamed. And so some of us that could be, some of us, it could be sugar, some of us, it could be gluten, some of us, it could be cheese or dairy or what, whatever. And so it's just g getting a sense of what, what also might be contributing to the inflammation in our body, which we can perhaps, um, you know, uh, uh, elimin eliminate for a little a while or avoid. Yeah. And, and soups feel so good too. Soups feel so good. <laughs> they're, just like, they're, they're just like a really feel good, <laughs> nice, comforting, soul nourishing thing to have. I've been loving my soups right now. Yeah, exactly. Go and, and also too, sorry, real quick before I forget, a soak in the tongue or something like that. If you have, or if you're having joint pain or, or, you know, you're feeling sore after a workout, I like to have a nice soak in the tub, especially before bed. And that, because I think um, somebody had said they were having trouble sleeping after, you know, because of the, the aches and pains after working out. So again, though, if it's chronic, do get that checked out just in case it's something more and you can be given something more to alleviate the pain. Yeah. But uh, yeah, heat can help. Well, I was just going to say, um, even from an East, <clears throat> East Asian medicine perspective, which is what I study and practice, we really try to avoid ice unless it's really within the first um, like 24 hours of an right. injury. But uh, barring that heat, uh, because if you think of the function of heat, it's expand it expands and gets things moving. And that's what we want in our body, which is why movement and exercise is really important. So heat is really great. And also, and I'm going to just uh, plug this because in addition to um, 
strength training, um, you know, acupuncture is really, really great for helping people navigate uh, chronic um, pain or even acute pain. So if you have an acupuncturist near you, it might be really helpful. Very cool. I just want to clarify one thing too, because I don't just do strength training. I do oh. training in general, like strength. Oh. Um, I, I, I advise against usually for most of my clients, the steady state cardio. So I do more like hit or hurt or not like it hurts you, but high intensity <laughs> resistance training or high. Anyway, but I do all kinds, but it's just customized to what the person needs. Okay. Um, Thank you for clarifying that. And actually just to kind of promote this for you, um, because I know that you do a lot of online consultation with your clients. For those of us who don't like to go to the gym or lift weights because <clears throat> some of us like myself, I need an accountability buddy. That's where I'm actually, I work best. And also for some of us, we may not feel like we want to progress. Like we get to a nice comfortable place in our, in our mm -hmm. training and then we're like, yeah, I'm comfortable here, but the progression is where we're going to progress. And so perhaps some, having someone like you uh, helping us develop a plan and then we're accountable is probably a very good thing. And also help yeah. us help, help those of us who don't really uh, want to go to the gym or even understand how to do this. Training. No, it's true. And, and people react to, to different kinds of coaches too. Like, so I've, I've had clients that want me to be really firm with them and I've had clients, you know, it's, it depends on the personality, but whatever, it's nice to have someone that is at least checking up on you and offering you guidance as you do it. Cause it does make you feel more accountable. Yeah. Um, and, and it's okay to be at a place where you don't need to progress too. Cause like, I'm at a, hmm. like, if you're happy where you are, it's good. And then it gets easier because you're just maintaining. Um, but for a lot of people, they feel like, oh, I'm going to have to work out this hard forever, forever, but it gets easier. It does get easier. Yeah. Um, and our bodies change and, and the needs of our bodies change as well as we, as we get, yeah. as we kind of progress through life. So, okay. To sum I, summarize, because I'm sure we're already at our 10 minutes. I um, never check the time. I need a clock. <laughs> I know. I don't either because it's on my phone. So, uh, I'll, so I'll just summarize what I was mentioning and then you can summarize yours really uh, quickly. So uh, for me, from a lifestyle perspective, it would be ver uh, varying your movements. So walking sideways, walking backwards, twisting, rotating, squat, like just doing different things and you can have it stacked. So it doesn't have to be that you're, you're taking time away from your other things in life to do this. You could be doing this while you work. You could be doing this, having a phone meeting while you take a walk or a hike. You could be habit stacking if time is really, um, really a, a crunch for you. You could be squatting while you cut your vegetables. You could just do, be doing all this kind of vary, varying your movements uh, throughout your day. And um, just being mindful of maybe any inflammatory foods or people or situations that are causing um, stress response because that's gonna cause inflammation. I think those are my two big things. And then systemically hydrating water, but all like we say room temperature water, but also soups, stews, congees, broths, those kinds of things are gonna be deeply nourishing. And then I hand it over to you. <laughs> and to go along with that, warm up, warm up, warm up, cool down, cool down, cool down. Just got to ease your body into it and then ease it back out of it, bring that heart rate down. And stretching can be done on non-workout days. Stretching is something you can do every day. There's no maximum of stretching you can do. So it's just really good to keep those, you know, to, to work out any stiffness that you're feeling. Um, if you are feeling any pain or if it's Pain that's not going away there's things like we're more susceptible to things like tendonitis as well which would go from the joint that tends to go from a joint down to an extremity and that is not a normal thing so that's something you should get checked out because working out could make that worse so those are the things to look out for if it doesn't feel if it's something that tends to go away after a few days then that's good that's normal <laughs> and yeah. heat and you just reminded me a repetitive strain. So if we're always on the computer or yes. if we're doing things, that's going to cause joint issues. So again, setting an alarm for your phone every half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, let it vibrate, get up, move, move your joints because joint health is obviously so important, which is why we're talking about it. Um, so that we're avoiding that repetitive injury that's happening. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And that timer can be used for to remind you to drink water too. Yeah. Same time. Yep. <laughs> Habit stacking. <laughs> Stacey, as always, it's very nice uh, to see you. And um, next week, I guess, and also it's October is uh, World Menopause Awareness Month. So yes. maybe next week we can talk a little bit about the history of, <clears throat> well, I think the conversation is being had all over the place now. It's starting to become a very um, charged topic. And maybe we can do something next week just to talk about the history of menopause uh, the history in our country, which is, you know, we have a, a lot of deep uh, untangling and unlearning to do in terms of how we perceive this particular phase in our life, uh, which will help, I think, um, with some of our symptoms. But um, if anyone else has any thoughts, please let us know. And uh, do you have a tea with you? Of course. Ready? Yeah. Ooh, you. <laughs> mm. Thank you all for being here. Um, so for the last maybe 10 seconds, if anyone wants to throw something in the chat box about what you would like us to talk about, uh, either next week or in the next coming weeks, that would be really helpful because we're sort of here having this conversation, uh, not just for us, but for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're a resource. We're here for you guys. So we want to, it's, it's helping all of us to yeah. chat about these things. So whatever's on your mind, let us know and we can have a discussion about it. Yes. The more we talk about it, the better. Yeah, exactly. Less scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's something why I want to, and this is what I want to address, or at least talk about for a, a few moments next week, about why some of the reasons why we may feel it's scary, and also maybe some of the stuff that we're not even recognizing <clears throat> is part, part of our narrative around this particular phase that's important to address. Yeah. All right, my friends, thank you for uh, joining us, and we will see you next Thursday. Stace, have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank everyone. You. Oh, I hope that helped. <laughs>